Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda. And this week I'm caking a giant piece of lasagna for Father's Day. Cody had a difficult time shooting this episode because he was salivating and I kept having to remind him <laughs> that it wasn't, it wasn't lasagna, it was cake. The first thing that you have to do in order to make this cake is make the lasagna noodles. So I made my noodles a day before assembling the cake and they are made out of 50-50, which is 50% gum paste and 50% fondant and guess what color I dyed it. Ivory. That's right, <laughs> ivory. Um, wait, did I use ivory? I actually used, I wait, <laughs> wait, no, I knew I used other colors too, that's why. I used ivory, I used buttercup yellow and a bit of golden yellow to create, well, a pasta color. I actually had a little bowl of cooked pasta so I could like, as my model. I divide my 50-50 into four sections and then I roll each section out and I need to roll it into a rectangle that's a little bit larger than my cake layers will be. In order to set the curly pattern, I needed to use something that was round and I needed a lot of it. And so I ended up using wine corks because they're the perfect size and they're soft and they'll be gentle on the 50-50 and easy to pull out. What goes good with lasagna? Wine. How many wine corks did you have? I had enough. <laughs> I placed my perfect rectangle of 50-50 onto a cake board and then on either side, I lay underneath seven corks. Now I'm gonna set this giant lasagna noodle aside and guess what? Make some more in the same way. You all know that I love making cakes that look like food, like this lasagna. And there are more cakes that look like food in my cake book. And right now you can get a signed copy on sale at howtocakeit.com. Now, as I go along, I keep checking the sheets I've already made because 50-50 sets up pretty quick. And once they're a little bit set, I actually want to remove the corks. I need to make sure that it's keeping that curl, but I do not want to dry it the entire time with the corks underneath. All six sheets of my lasagna noodles are looking good and I want to put them in a cool, dry place to set. You'll need to do this about a day in advance. Okay, now we're at cake. <laughs> For this lasagna cake, I baked eight pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter in one rectangular pan. Just one? Just one, can you believe it? When's the last time I made a cake that had just one pan? I, can't I don't even think there's one. I don't think so. It's like 11 by 15 so you're gonna cut it in, in half and then mm. you'll see, we're gonna get there. Level it and cut the caramelization off the bottom. The sides? Very good, Orhan. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove the caramelization from all four sides. Now I want to cut my cake in half down the center so I'm left with two rectangular cakes. And then I'm gonna cut each one of those rectangles into two layers. Now I have four rectangular layers of cake. It's like a kindergarten math problem. <laughs> you know what time it is, Sir Squeeze is here to help me simple syrup all four layers of my cake. It's not Father's Day for him, so I don't feel bad. Oh, they haven't had the baby yet? Before? No, they haven't. I wonder what the baby would be. A, a squeeze bottle with a built-in funnel? It's time to make the other components of this lasagna cake. So the first thing I want to make is the cheese layer, which I love doing this. So I found these like, they're like Eastern European meringue cookies, and I put them into my food processor and just sort of pulsed them. What I'm gonna do is take my beautiful Italian meringue buttercream, but I wanted to make it intentionally lumpy. So I just mixed in enough meringue cookies into the buttercream until I get that sort of cheesy look. And now I'm happy. Not only am I making this giant lasagna cake for Father's Day, but we're also having a Father's Day sale at howtocakeit.com and everything is up to 40% off, including Sir Squeeze. Maybe your dad needs a friend. Click the I and it will take you to my website. For the meat portion of this lasagna, I am putting together some chocolate rice puff cereal with candy melts. So for the candy melts, I'm going to use like a milk chocolate candy melt and then I'm gonna use some white chocolate and some black. And the reason is, I know that meat is brown, but it's not like chocolate brown, do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. So I wanted to add a bit of a gray to it to just soften the brown and make it look, well, more meaty. Mmm, 
<laughs> That's what I'm going for, I'm sorry. And once I'm happy with the color, I mix the chocolate with the cocoa rice puffs. And now it looks like cooked ground meat. Sauce, I have to make the sauce. So what I do to make my sauce is mix together my Italian meringue buttercream with seedless, very important, seedless raspberry jam. And then I add red food coloring until I'm happy with the color. And this time, you know what I did? I also mixed in some dried mint so it looked like oregano and basil. And did I smudge my eyebrow? Did I? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> would you tell me or would the episode be like me? No. <laughs> so now I have everything I need. I have my lasagna noodles. I'm gonna do this four times. I've got my lasagna noodles. I've got my ricotta cheese mixture. I've got my meat and I have my sauce. And now I'm gonna make Lasagna. <laughs> so what I've decided to do is use an assembly line method, which I like because it's neater. First thing I want to do is pick up my syruped layers of cake and lay all four of those layers onto four of my lasagna noodles. So remember, I have six noodles, one is extra, yes. and one will be the top noodle, so I it see. doesn't need cake I on see. top. How come the last two times I've worn this crumb coat and chill apron, there's no crumb coat and chill in the cake. Next thing I'm going to do is take each one of these noodles with a cake on top and I'm going to spoon on my meat mixture. I'm basically going to spoon a border of meat mixture all the way around the cake. So the same height as the cake, but carefully spoon it on. Once I've laid my meat border around the cake on each noodle, I just want to chill them for a little. My meat is set and now I can spread my cheese filling on top. You wanna make sure that the meat is set because if it's not, it will just all move around and your lasagna will be a mess. I don't just wanna cover the cake with buttercream, I wanna also cover on top of the meat layer. Listen up everyone, because there's something I need to tell you. We are really excited to announce that we will be featuring new cakes every single Monday by cake artists that we think you guys will love. It's all happening over on our new channel, How to Cake It Step by Step. This week, we kick things off with a Jack Jack cake from The Incredibles by the cake artist Asma Qureshi. Click right here to watch it, or you can find it in the description below. Show Asma some love in the comments of that video and welcome her to the How to Cake It family. And now we can finally assemble the whole cake using our sauce as the glue. What do you mean? Well, because now they're separate. Yeah. But now I'm going to stack. Okay. Okay? But you're still going to explain it, right? Of course. No, I'm done. <laughs> Figure it out. Because you said we're Figure it <laughs> out. What do you think this show is? Did you think this was a tutorial? <laughs> <laughs> my second noodle with cake and meat and cheese on top. Then I ladled on a good amount of sauce and I used my offset spatula to spread it and I want it to drip down the side. But I want a controlled drip. I then sprinkled on a little bit of mint. Next layer. By the way guys, if you're a VIP, check your email because I used my leftover meat mixture to make some chocolate crispy treats. For those of you who don't know, we send our VIPs an email on Monday nights and we give them a little bit of behind the scenes, some footage that didn't make it into the video. Sometimes it's trips or things I do when I'm not in this kitchen. And you can sign up absolutely free at howtokeakit.com. Oh, and you also get a first look at each week's cake. Now I need to pick the perfect final lasagna noodle to lay on top. I felt like The Bachelor. I gave one the offset spatula, and the other one had to go home. I'm gonna guess that they're just exactly the same to a normal line. I could see the difference. Okay. After I placed the winning noodle on top, I spread another ladle of sauce, Control drips down the side, and now this lasagna needs cheese on top. I'm using some modeling chocolate that I made. I made it the day before, it's set, and now I'm gonna grate it just like you would cheese. Now I'm going to top this lasagna with my grated cheese, and then it's time for Bernie. Oh, Bernie's in this too. But you know what, Bernie let me down. No. Bernie 
ran out of steam. So I had to go back to Mr. Burns and finish the lasagna. And you just want to hold your flame, you know, close enough to melt the cheese, but you don't want to burn it. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, Cody got really hungry at this point and I still am not done. Because when you serve a piece of lasagna, you should put a ladle of sauce on top of it. Did you know that? And this time I really controlled the drips because I wanted it just to drip down the center of each side and I wanted the corner to stay nice and cheesy, right? And as a final touch, I had some white chocolate shavings mm. that look like, you know, like grated Parmigiano and then a little more mint on top and voila. This year is Cody's first Father's Day and lasagna is his favorite food. So I thought he should have all the lasagna cake that he wanted. Perfect. Orhan, he came back for seconds, thirds, fourths, <laughs> fifths. And I didn't get any. No. Do I have to make a child too? Yes, you must make a child <laughs> and I will make another lasagna cake. Deal. <laughs> Don't forget to watch Asma's Jack Jack cake right here. It's incredible. <laughs> Bye. Bye.